Welcome to the Farmer's Market at Scissor Tail Park cooking series sponsored by Shape Your Future. I am Shelby Sieg. I am the chef and operating partner at Lua Mediterranean and Bottle Shop in the heart of the Plaza District. Cooking can be really intimidating um, if you don't have a background in it, if it's not something that you do a whole lot. But I believe cooking at home for yourself and your loved ones is really important and really fun because it lets you really just connect with the ingredients, um, customize things and add them to your taste. And really, um, I think it's just something kind of fun and hands-on. It's something I do at home um, with my nephews. I'll bring them over and kind of show them and make it a, sometimes a fun science experiment on things, but really just show them all the cool things that you can do, especially with all these fresh vegetables. This partnership is about providing recipes for very healthy meals at home, featuring local seasonal ingredients um, and items that you can find at your local farmer's market. I know it can be kind of intimidating uh, going to the farmer's market and seeing a lot of different ingredients and things that maybe you haven't seen before. So we're gonna kind of go through um, how to use some of those things and make things very approachable um, so you can have really quick, easy meal ideas at home. So today I'm just gonna make a fresh summer salad featuring um, a lot of items that, that from the farmer's market that you can get. These strawberries are from the farm on Fish Market in Winnet, Oklahoma. All of the fresh herbs that we're using today are from a &H Urban Farm in Oklahoma City. This arugula that we're using today is from Looney Farm in Alex, Oklahoma. These lovely cucumbers are from Crow's Farm in Shawnee, Oklahoma. These specialty tomatoes are from Huffman Farm in Choctaw. The honey that we're using today is from Hall's Beekeeping in Yukon, Oklahoma. And our olive oil today is from the oil tree in Oklahoma City. First thing we're gonna do is um, cook some quinoa. And what I wanted to talk about before we cook the quinoa, because we're gonna be using a vegetable stock to cook it, um, is using kind of scraps from some of the farmer's market vegetables or really anything that you have at home. Being sustainable and using scraps um, in stocks and finding kind of different ways to use those things is really amazing, keeps your costs low, and it's something that you can make a stock with and just throw in the freezer, use it for a lot of different things. So if you have, for example, onion tops or even just a half an onion left over from a different recipe, um, carrot tops, you don't even have to worry about peeling anything. And then also just um, mushrooms or really just the, the parts of anything that you can find at the grocery store or the, the market. Throw them in just any kind of pot with a couple of quarts of water. Let that boil for a bit and then strain it out. You can, um, like I said, just put it into a container and freeze it or just use it for your favorite rice, quinoa, um, any kind of soup, anything we're gonna be making with a stock. So we're going to be cooking some quinoa today. It is a whole grain. Um, it is also gluten-free and full of protein, so it makes a really complete meal. So I'm just gonna grab just a um, simple pot, put my quinoa directly into it. And then the vegetable stock that we have made previously, we're just gonna pour right over that. So it's about a two to one ratio. We've got about a cup of quinoa and two cups of vegetable stock. So this you're gonna put um, a lid on or a bowl, anything to kind of cover it. Put it over a very low heat and it'll take about 20 to 25 minutes to cook depending on how much quinoa that you're gonna make. So while that's cooking, we're gonna go ahead and prep some of our vegetables. So I like to have everything that I'm using kind of set out ahead of time so you're not having to run to the refrigerator, to the pantry, to grab anything while you're cooking. In this, we're going to have some cucumber, some fresh ripe tomatoes, a bit of arugula, some farm fresh strawberries. And then I like to have the option of when they're in season, um, some fresh chili as well, if you want to add a bit of heat to the salad, just for some kind of variation. And then in addition to that, I have a couple of bunches of really amazing herbs. For this, I'm gonna use basil and mint, but the really amazing thing about this salad or anything kind of like it, you can really customize it to what your, your specific taste is. So for this cucumber, there's so many different ways that you can cut this and really it's just about how you want it to look in the bowl for something like this. For this, I'm just going to slice it right down the center. And then you can take this and just kind of make some half moon shapes out of it. And the thickness is actually kind of just depending on how long you're gonna have this sit before you eat it. Um, I'm going pretty thin because we're gonna eat it fairly immediately after I make it. But if you wanna have it sit 
just a bit longer. You can cut them a bit thicker. When we look at these holistic food systems, we're really trying to make sure that we're getting the most out of everything um, and using all the scrap and having as little waste as possible. So we already talked about taking the scraps and making a stock with them. The other thing you can do is um, use all of this for compost. Any of your stems that are left over, anything that you wouldn't want to put in a stock, but you want to make sure that you're using every bit of it. Um, that's just something that can all go into the compost pile. So for this, we're just going to slice some fresh tomatoes. And then from there, we'll just um, cut them into some bite-sized pieces. This is uh, one of those things that you just want as much color as possible. So it's really, really attractive on the plate, but you're also getting a lot of great variation in vitamins and the fruits and vegetables that you're eating. So something like this can also um, be made ahead and put in the refrigerator. The only difference is that if you want to make it ahead like that, I would probably wait on putting any of the vinaigrette that we're gonna use on it until the very end so the quinoa doesn't get soggy. So this is the part that um, people sometimes don't think about of mixing fruits and vegetables all in one salad. I like to have a bit of sweet and savory, especially when it comes to something that's cold and refreshing like a summer salad. It just keeps things interesting. It's a way, again, to get some variation of color and then um, especially to keep the kiddos interested in the vegetables. On this, I'm cutting these just in um, circles. You can really do just about anything for sure if you wanted to do quarters um, just for some variation. But I kind of like the look of having the strawberries in some larger pieces. One of my favorite things about shopping at farmer's markets and having all of these really amazing fresh ingredients is connecting with the people that have made them. I think when you start to have kind of a connection, if possible, to some of your food, it really makes you um, think about what you're eating a little bit more. And if you do have access to a farmer's market like Scissor Tail, um, it's an incredible thing to start to kind of meet some of those farmers. So we're just going to add some arugula into the mix that we have so far. Go through and kind of stir this up a little bit so you can see kind of the variation in some of those colors. Arugula is also one of those things that will wilt a bit quickly um, if you dress it too far in advance. So you'll want to wait till the very end if you're not going to eat it right away. One of the things about arugula that I love is apart from some textural difference, it's got this really, really peppery bite to it. So next, I'm just gonna add some basil. Now with the basil and the mint both, I really like just kind of tearing those by hand. When it kind of just eliminates a little bit of, of the knife work that you have to do and maybe becomes a little less intimidating of throwing in a bowl. But the other part of it is, I think it just kind of looks nice to have it a little bit homey and rustic. Torn herbs are something I really like throwing in, just even a green leafy salad, because it just makes it a lot less boring. So all the basil, I'm gonna just throw that in there. Some mint as well, just for something a little bit refreshing. Basil can sometimes have really licorice-y punch to it. So I like adding a bit of mint just to keep it fresh. I chose to make this meal just because I like um, keeping things really light and fresh. Um, one of kind of the hallmarks, I guess, of my style of cooking is just to um, take really incredible, amazing ingredients and not do a whole lot to them. Um, I think when you have really quality ingredients, you don't really have to manipulate them very much and you can really just showcase how they are. So you're gonna stir all of this up. We're gonna take our quinoa here and uh, what you'll wanna do once it's chilled, we just wanna make sure we're taking a fork and kind of fluffing it just a bit so it stays kind of nice, light, and separated that way. And then on this, I'm really just gonna add about what I want to from this, depending on kind of what you're going for. If you want the salad to be a little bit grain forward, and you can add a bit more quinoa to it. If you would prefer it to be more fruit and vegetable forward, 
then adding just a little bit for some balance and for some protein is kind of the way I would go for sure. Kind of mix that up and just a bit more. So it's already looking really beautiful and colorful from this point. Now what I'm gonna do is, just in a separate bowl, I'm gonna make just a very, very light, quick vinaigrette. So I've got some fresh lemons here. Just slice in half. And one hack that I always like to tell everybody about um, cutting lemons is using a pair of tongs if you don't have any kind of juicer at home and just putting through here and squeezing it this way. And that way you're getting a lot more juice out of it. You just have to watch for the seeds when you're doing that and straining it. But it's a lot easier than trying to manually juice those by hand. So we're gonna add just a bit of that lemon juice. And as with most of the um, different parts of this recipe, everything is really customizable to, to your specific taste. So if you want it to be a little bit more lemon forward, a little bit more acidic, definitely add more lemon juice to it. Um, the same with all of the herbs and really any of the veg as well. So that lemon juice, I added just a bit of olive oil to it. We're going to make sure and salt this. You don't want it to taste salty, but you wanna make sure that you're adding enough salt to season it and pull out the rest of the flavors in, in the entire salad. Um, and then, the last thing I'm gonna add to it is just some local honey, just to give it a little bit of sweetness. It also will give it a little bit of viscosity, so it sticks to the salad a little better. And then just gonna whisk that together. What I like to do is make sure that I have a couple of spoons ready um, that you're not using for anything else that you can go through, taste that, make sure that's good, and then throw that straight into the dish. So that's really it on the vinaigrette. It's very, very straightforward. We're just gonna go ahead and pour that directly over the salad, and then go through and toss that together. As far as the amount of dressing, it's just really dressing that to taste. She can go in with a fresh spoon and grab a bit of that and see how that is. Perfect. And then we're just going to put that in a nice bowl. Just a beautiful presentation on that. And that's it. So there you just have a really beautiful, light, fresh summer salad featuring ingredients that you can get at Scissor Tail Farmer's Market.